good plan order. Uh, matter of fact, there's the invoice. Wow, you sure did. Yeah. Lots of all plants. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow. At least a dozen There's or so. A couple on the next page too. Huh? Huh. So I got some Madagascar lace leaf. And I got them in the tank upstairs. And the uh, the delivery was only nine ninety nine. Yeah, it's a special. I don't know if it was a special for one time only. Uh huh. Or that's what they charge all the time if you buy a certain number. You know, if it's over. A hundred dollars or whatever, which this one was, yeah. obviously. Aquariumplants.com. Yeah, they're out of Florida. I'm surprised that you buy plants because you have every tank just filled with plants, as we can see in the background here. Yeah, but and, uh, a lot of these plants are the plants I just got from this guy. Okay. Well, before we get to talking too far... Uh, are these your guppies? These are the guppies that I promised you. Okay, oh yeah, that's a nice, nice group of Look at the colors on this. Oh, this, yeah. is, this is a blonde oh, like one, yeah. and this is my common red ones. Okay. And the females all have colorful tails too, and then there's the split that. tails. Okay. Should be two of them, I hope. Okay. And I just did the best I could this morning. Where would you like them? Or in that tank you? right there, we'll throw them in there. Alright. Yeah. 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 Right here, right? Yeah, we're going to black mollies. Yeah, I see more. Yeah, okay. It's just so one. We're going to flow the tank, will it? Oh, these guys are going to be happy. Okay, that's just that's barely made it. Yeah. We'll, uh, I'll put them in a bucket and I'll drip water from my tank into there. Okay. So the, they're, uh, they're adjusting to the new water a drop at a time. Okay. The uh, mollies are out of the office tank and I, I have a heck of a time catching them in there because they're. There's so much growth in there, and they, as soon as you go in with a net, man, they disappear in the back I corner. Know, I know. Uh, but you I try to catch fish where you have plants in there. It's just almost impossible. I find nowadays all I have to do, I take all the plants out, <laughs> then I can catch whatever I want. There you go. <laughs> Lesson learned over time, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it saves you time overall. Well, the uh, other day, I, I've had some trouble with what I call now my maternity tank. Okay. That split better tank I had. Oh yeah. That um, I finally took the divider out, and so that I had uh, just a five-gallon tank. And what I found, uh, I had enough plants in there. I could put mothers in there. If they dropped their babies, the babies would do fine. And then I'd take the mother back out. But those mollies, they're as pregnant as they come. And I can take them and put them in there as much as I want, and they will not drop their babies. Yeah. I don't know what it is because when you look at those two, as we'll show them I know, I know. later, they're full as can be. I know, it looks like they'll drop any time, but Should. they just seem to uh, not do it. I don't know why. And some of the YouTubes, I mean, the guy takes it out and puts it in a, you know, a, a, a birthing basket of some type, right. and a day later he's got the film of the babies being born. Just never know. Yeah, but the... Uh, so I, I had those two female mollies in that tank. Okay. Hoping they would drop their babies. Right. But they were the best looking ones I had. All right. And I said, all right, you know what? I'm not going to be able to catch the others, anything else in that morning. So I gave you the two best I had from that tank. It was okay. really easy to get them. For some reason or other, they just settled to the bottom huh. and they sort of stay there. And then from across the room, they're in the living room, I can see them swim once in a while, but they tend to sit on the bottom for days. Huh. And I, I don't feel good about that. I mean, I no, like I seeing fish swimming around. And in yeah. the other tanks, they do swim around. So I, Hard to it's say. easy to catch them this morning. Okay. Easy to catch them in that particular tank. Well, that's good. So tell me about what's been going on here, besides the order of the plants. In fact, let me just uh, well, move I this over. Well, I have a new, new project going. I'm thinking about making an offer to one of my... Uh, Shops, one of the new ones that I'm going to. Uh huh. I'm not ready for it yet because I'm still experimenting. I'm going to try to sell them plants. Okay. You see the way I've got this arranged in this tank? Hold on one second. Go ahead, point to it again. Right here. Right. I'm finding that there are certain plants that I'm going to have to put in a tank that will display better 
than the way this is. For example, the cordata that you see here, mm -hmm. I had them lined up front to back. Right. But as you can see, they just get buried amongst the other plants. Right. So I'm going to have to lessen the number. Originally, I started off, I decided I would have 10 different varieties of plants across the front of the tank. And, you know, in line, six bunches of plants straight on back. First of all, I can't have any plants in there that will grow to the side because then it hides the plants on the other side. Mm -hmm. So now I've, I've decided I'll have to go back to a um, eight rows, four on each side, you know, separated. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to laugh because yeah. you know how I plant. Yeah. And Pam, of course, plants totally different. And here you are, four over here, four. I mean, you, you are super organized. You are a planter by... Oh, well, I try to be, but it doesn't work out too well. No, but you've got to plan when you start. Yeah, That's exactly. pretty cool. Exactly. When I start, the plan is there. But I'm finding I have to experiment and find out what kind of plants I can put in that will grow straight up to the top. Right. And won't bury and hide the plants that are in the row next to it. Well, you, you're... Your tanks, all of them, have plenty of open space in the top, as we'll see as we go through each one. Right. And the uh, mine, the forest just grows up. And eventually I have to do something because it starts blocking the light. Right. Especially that type of plant you got in the middle there. This one? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that I think grows that's like a, a I forest. I think you gave me that one. To I, may I, I may have. I may have. It looks yeah. like it. Yeah. But I, mine grows like crazy. It I mean, grow, It grows pretty quick here, too. But... Like I say, it doesn't grow right straight up. So when it fans out to the side, then it'll hide the row of plants on either side of it. And uh, that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to eliminate that one as a source of a plant that I could uh, sell. Now let's talk about the fish in there. You've got some nice looking guppies in there. Yeah, I've gotten them from a few different places. I love the, the flaming yellow, which uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to get a good picture of those. The yellow and black I'm looking at, they, they, they iridescent, and your red tail ones look like the same ones that I'm getting you over here, just a little bit Could different. Be, yeah. But look at that better. Yeah. Oh, he's gorgeous. Yeah. And he's he's iridescent also. Uh, yeah, that's a a better. I forget they had a special name for that particular one. I think it was. Uh, well, I can't remember it now, but I've gotten it at Petco. You know how they have all these yep. fancy ones? Yeah. They give fancy names to them so they can charge you 20 bucks or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and that it, had a special uh, connotation to what color it was. But I, it is very pretty. I must admit, I resist paying more than the lowest price that they sell on these things because they well, all I, look so I, beautiful. I resist it, too. Generally speaking, the veil tails are all you really need. Right. They're colorful enough. You don't, you don't need the other... All the fancy stuff. I'm just getting a close-up of this one. For I you. made the mistake. I put them in a tank where there was another bed. He got all beat up. He was almost dead. I had to take him out and put him in that jar. And huh. he's gradually growing his fins back now. Well, he certainly looks gorgeous here. All right, let me count over he's to this. He's been in that tank, too. Yeah, I saw that one before too. Let me let me go to this tank next. Okay. And so hold on one second. I've got the full frame, but sure. All right. Tell us what you've been doing here. I mean, obviously the Amazon sword plants are going like crazy as oh, they yeah. always do for you. Yeah. And uh, now that's something I'm going to bring a couple of them along with me today. I'm going to offer them to the uh, the guys that own the store and see what they'll pay me for them. Mm -hmm. Typically, they they may not pay you for them as much. They'll give you a credit. Oh. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you're interested in that. Well, no, that would be all right, because I, I do buy fish and, and things from them. Yeah. But uh, I want to see how much they're going to offer at any rate. Okay. And so your black angel is gorgeous, and they said, you just lost one, and so did I. Funny yeah. thing about that. And there's the guppies that I brought you in the bag in the background here. And the angels, it's hard to understand, because they get a little long time. I don't know, did I ever tell this story about uh, Charlie Claremont? No. He was a guy, he used to be a, um, a manager for Ward Baking Company years ago. Okay. I had gotten, he raised just angelfish. All right. And this is back when you had a shop. Yeah. Okay. And uh, at the time, I mean, he was a real nice guy. 
And I had asked them on the one occasion, I said, could I bring some of my customers over just to view your operation? Because at any one time you'd go there, you could see like 20,000 different angels. Right. You know, all different. I mean, you could have them laying eggs. You could have the eggs hatching. You could see the newborn babies. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, developed a system uh, where he stored them in 50-gallon tanks that were liners from old refrigerator linings. <laughs> that, uh, he, he covered the holes up with uh, some kind of uh, cement. You know, uh, putty or whatever. That was a cheap tank. Yeah. Heavy duty. And uh, he had them all over his, at the bottom of, underneath his racks of fish. And that's, that was his raise up tanks for the different sizes. So did he let you bring some of your customers over? Yeah, and I would bring sometimes six or eight people that I would ask, you know, would you be yeah. interested in seeing this? Because huh. the guy was really something in the way he knew how to do things. Mm -hmm. And he had just two tanks that he used for developing the eggs. You know, he had pieces of slate at an angle in a tank that it was convenient for the uh, fish to lay their eggs on. And he would take them from there, remove them from the parents, put them in these two other tanks that they would uh, hatch out. He said that the only two tanks that he could use that the eggs didn't uh, constantly um, develop fungus. Huh. How about that? I think one was a 15 gallon, one was a 20 long. And did he have any idea what the difference was in those tanks, that it worked and others it didn't? He had no idea what it was, but he said those two tanks worked, so he just never bothered doing anything else. Uh -huh. He said, and then as soon as the babies hatched out, then he'd take them out and put them into a growth area somewhere else. Sometimes it's 50-gallon tanks, but usually a smaller tank that he could observe them better. And he fed a lot of uh, baby brine shrimp that he raised himself, you know, at that seems to be the key. The raising oh, the brine yeah. shrimp really makes a difference when you oh, grow yeah. angels. Uh, not just angels, any of the fish. If the baby fish grow so much better on a live food, mm -hmm. particularly initially, yeah, you know, the first couple of months of their lives. So right. he had that going all the time. And at that time, I think San Francisco was still selling the shrimp in like gallon-sized containers, the shrimp eggs. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it was, uh, I think it was, I don't know, 30 or $40 a gallon. So I'm not sure it's a lot more expensive now, but yeah, it was, uh, it was quite an operation. And the people that uh, they would take over there really appreciated seeing it. An inside visit, sure, that's great. Now I'm over looking at your first tank as you come in the door. Right. And uh, you got the two black angels in there, and you were just telling me before about the platies here that are doing so well. I mean, you got yeah, so many of them. Red-tailed black periodus platy, which I was disappointed in to begin with. So I've gotten eight of them and two died within a matter of a couple of days. And uh, the place I got them from was one of the places on the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, you know, I'd like to have four males and four females. I'm sorry, they said, we don't uh, sex them. But if you buy enough, you're going to have both sexes. <laughs> That's the way they operate. Except for the self and black mollies. Now, they, those they did sell in, in specific pairs. But you who and Those are the ones I only got two pair. And I had I had over 100 babies in there of all different sizes. Mm -hmm. And that was the one that uh, the uh, fish mm -hmm. feeder malfunctioned on, overfed them, and so everything died in that tank. Yeah, you were on vacation and yeah. trusted technology. Yeah. The black, the uh, black angels just look so gorgeous here. I love the black angels. I, I said oh, yeah, I, really I only nice. had one left, and uh, yeah. that's the one that just passed away, just yesterday, in fact. But yeah, those platies are just all over the place up there. Yeah. You know, the last time I went to a Discus Madness, they had a lot more variety of angels. Oh. Even what they call koi angels, mm -hmm. but I didn't find them to be all that attractive or different. Yeah, you know, just slightly different colors and maybe the face or the first uh, maybe third of the body. Well, I noticed that Hidden Reef has uh, high-priced angels anymore. Yeah. I mean, they're all specialty. I personally don't I, see the difference and no, not into either. collecting them, so it's the, no, not either. something I really buy. No. But uh, Until they develop the colors more significantly, yeah. I just don't see them as being that attractive. But there's that plant again, 
that you were talking about. Well, that no, I, that's a narrow leaf Ludwigia. Okay. It's, no, it's different than these. Okay. And behind it is the broadleaf uh, Ludwigia. There's two bunches of each, okay. which I bought just recently from this other outfit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, as a matter of fact, they arrived Thursday last week. And they've been doing well since I put them in there. Now I'm sort of surprised. I see in the background here you have a heater in this tank. And you right. we're in your fish room. Right. Okay, which has climate control in that sense. No, it doesn't. It doesn't? No. So you get cold at night? So, no, because the heater's in the tank keep the whole room. Oh, it's the okay. heater in the tank that keeps the room warm. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. And, and it's well insulated. I, I made sure that you... Uh, the guy that I, I hired to build the room, that he insulated it well. I think he turned in each of the tanks. It keeps this room warm. Huh. That's surprising. I, I do have an air conditioner at the end when it gets too hot during the summer. I saw that down the end there, the air yeah. conditioner in there. Yeah. Now this is down in your basement. That's right. And so it doesn't have any outside uh, connection. And so you, you've got quite a bit of control in that sense, don't you? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, how has the, uh, I mean, I haven't been here in a year. Right. Pandemic-wise, it's been very restrictive, but uh, how has the pandemic affected your fish and life? Well, my life has been somewhat restricted. The, the major thing that I'm disappointed in with this Parkinson's is I don't play tennis anymore. Now, you're how old now? 80 what? 82. 82. And you've had Parkinson's for how long? This will be my eighth year. Well, and, and I'm telling you, I've known other people with Parkinson's and you're amazing. But you were explaining one time, you've got some type of implant in your back that helps? No, my brain. Oh, it's an implant in your brain? Yeah. Ah! And DBS, they call it. It's called deep brain stimulation. And what does that do? Well, I've got a controller here. Right. That uh, I go see a doctor every two or three months. And if I'm having symptoms like uh, more shaking in one arm or the other, he can make adjustments to stop that. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I'm, I'm, you know, between my heart transplant and now CGM, con uh, continuous glucose monitoring of my diabetes, okay. it's amazing how technology has made life possible. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you. I mean, I've known other Parkinson's people. They're no longer with us. And here you are complaining you haven't been able to get out and play tennis. <laughs> well, I played, the last I played was last fall. Mm -hmm. But I didn't play at a very high level or for very long because I got tired easily. Mm -hmm. Now I get tired more and more easily. And I find that it is debilitating. You know, as time goes by, I find there's less and less that I'm capable of doing. But whatever I am capable of, I do. Yep. This and, room being uh, a good example of that. I, I do work out every day for at least uh, about an hour every day. Do you? I do different kinds of exercises. Well, you know, my wife was a PT major. Right. So she gives me different exercises to do all the time. Good for you. Keep myself uh, going. Uh, you, you are amazing, Bruce. I mean, I've known you all these years, and uh, I, I've been frustrated of recent, and I'm talking recent the last couple of years. I've been losing my network of friends. Okay, you're a new acquisition in coming back together as we had. I mean, That's true. we were parted from our well, teenage days. If you think I'm amazing, how about you with a heart transplant for 25 years? <laughs> that's true, and I, I'm in awe of it myself. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. The, these other people, my closest friends, all in the mid 70s, by the way, yeah. are dying of cancers. Oh, part of the problem, I think, and I don't know what the hell do I know, right? Oh yeah, I know. Part of the problem, I think, is that they've been too healthy. Too healthy? They don't see any doctors. Oh, I see. And as a result, when finally they do start showing something, they say, "Ah, I'm a guy. This will go by." And a year or two later, they go oh, see a doctor okay. and they diagnose with cancer, and it's too far oh, gone. I see. Okay. All right. Because they're just unaccustomed to going to a doctor beforehand. Right. Okay. And they they. I mean, they brag about the fact that I've never had to see a doctor. Yeah. Well, you and I have seen our doctors, and we're still here talking about our friends. Yeah. And I'm 
When but I honestly, I probably on my own would not go and see a doctor. Right. It's my wife who encourages <laughs> me to go. Well, that's the other part of it. We we have our consciences that we married, right? That's right. And I, I have to do the same thing. My wife does the same thing to me. Well, I'm putting I, up with it. She my, says, no, we're going to ER. I call her the nag. <laughs> and as a result, you're still around. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's always making appointments for me with different... I said, what do I need to see this guy for or that guy? She said, you do. You need to have it checked on to make sure you're okay. Well, I'm serious. I've counted, and I have seven guys, all guys, oh, all right. close friends, for, in, in Ray's case, a lifetime... We yeah. came together in fourth grade, and we were still yeah. out doing fishing trips up until his death. Yeah. All right, and that's how we got reconnected with you. So I'm out there reinventing my network of friends. Yeah. Because I think that's a healthy thing to have friends oh, who. Oh no, no question about that. That's right. I mean, left to our own devices, we'd be sitting back counting the days till it's all over. Yeah. But we're inspired by our friends who are doing things like you. See, before the pandemic, also I I joined I had joined a couple of. Uh, different Parkinson's groups. One was a boxing group. I don't know if you I told you about uh, you that. You were telling time. me you were boxing. I still haven't figured out. But then they were doing it virtually boxing. Oh, I'm sorry. Time. Wait a minute. <laughs> Virtual <laughs> boxing. How yeah. the hell do you do that? Well, you know, they just do the exercises. Oh, and so okay. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I didn't, I wasn't going along with that because I needed the getting together with other people too in doing the working out. Right. And the boxing, I mean, it wasn't a lot of boxing, it's just a lot of uh, movement. exercising, movement, and so forth. But the one thing I did enjoy a, a lot when I went there, and it was done at the hospital with a, a group, and uh, was using the, the punching bag. I felt like I got a lot of my frustrations out of that punching ah. bag. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to eventually even buy one I can put here in the basement. Kind of <laughs> well, but I'm that hoping that group will open up again. But I don't know if I can join them because now I have to use the walker and I don't know. See, when I was with the group, no one was using a walker. Okay. So I don't know whether I'll be accepted or not. I see. I'll have to see when it, when it comes time that they open it up again. Well, you know, Bruce, i got to say, when I was coming here, uh, you have a steep set of stairs coming from upstairs kitchen area down to your fish room. Sure. Okay. And I must admit, I don't look forward to that because my knees, even though they've been replaced, still, right. it's pretty steep. Yeah. And as I was coming in the front steps, which are a couple of steps up, I'm thinking to myself, oh, geez, I've got to go down to the basement. Right. Yeah. And then your wife, Lee, says, you, you can use the chair. That's right. What a wise investment that was. Tell me about Always. that. What, what finally got you well, to do that? Um, I objected to it. I said, look, I can still do stairs. I don't need this. It's another expense we don't need. But she said, no, if you don't need it now, you're going to need it more in time. And she was right. They so, often are. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, yeah, we got it. It was $2,500. It's a lift chair. You see them advertised all yeah. the time. And uh, I was concerned about what's going to be the maintenance cost. You know, how often am I going to have to have it repaired? And I said, oh. Hardly ever. I don't know if that'll be the case or not because we haven't had it that long. How long have you had it now? All about three, four months. Well, I got to tell you, the first time I've ever been in a, a chair, chairlift, whatever yeah. you want to call it, yeah. and it was a pleasure coming down. Of course, I okay. had my camera, I had the bucket of fish, I had yeah. uh, yeah, the tripod and stuff like that. But it was a welcome thing, and I, I really okay. thought, whether it was your choice or hers, yeah. wise investment, okay? To well, be yeah. able to enjoy your room down here the like The other thing we're going to do for those front steps, well, that's in the works. We've got uh, contractors supposed to get back to the, the pricing, which have been kind of outrageous at this point. But anyway, uh -huh. I'm going to have a lift put in out there for when I can't get around anymore that I have to use a wheelchair or something. Mm -hmm. The lift will be, uh, you know, it's, an, it's like an elevator, but it's not really an elevator. Right. It'll just go up on a, a screw. Right. Okay. But at any rate, eventually you'll be able to use that too. <laughs> and uh, But so far, the prices have just been, oh, really crazy. I mean, first of all, the guy that installs the lift, that's $8,000 just for that. Oh! Yeah. You're talking about the front, a uh, lift to come up the front steps. Yeah. But we're going to replace the steps that we have now because I gotta put the platform at the top even with the uh, entrance into the house so that it will all line up together including the lift. The lift will take us up to the same level 
and then I can use a wheelchair or whatever I need to use at that point, get from there right into the house. Huh. But that's just the cost of the lift is 8000 Now the uh, extension of the porch, the new stairs that will be put in, in place of the ones that are there because they'll have to be destroyed. Also the concrete base that will need to be put in oh, leading up to the lift and going up and then over to the door. We've had prices anywhere from about 46 On top of the eight. To fifty-two thousand dollars on top of the eight thousand yeah. for the lift. Wow! I mean, fortunately, before I retired, I had invested well, so I do have the money to be able to do it. My wife was concerned. Do you want to do this? I said, Look, I may need it eventually. You may need it eventually. So yeah, we'll do it. But you know, until we get some contractors that we get firmed up, and hopefully better pricing, uh, we're not going to take care of it. So. We'll have to see. Comes with the age, and yeah. uh, I, I feel like a youngster compared to you. I'm only 78 going on 79, and I keep thinking to myself, 80, oh my God. But yeah. then I, you were my inspiration. Keep it okay. up, okay? <laughs> because yeah, I'll well, tell you, my legs are getting stiffer by the day. Let's put it this way. You know, when I first developed the Parkinson's, and I knew I had it. Right. Because I had seen... Uh, Michael J. Fox, you know, I'd right. seen his movement with yep. his wrist and his hand, mm -hmm. and I was getting some of that, and I said, yeah, that's what it is. But it took a year and a quarter from the time that I knew I had it until finally the medical community... Agreed. Yeah, and it wasn't, uh, it, was, it was kind of a strange thing, because I had gone to see my uh, gastroenterologist. I was in the any room, and... Uh, he opens the door and he points at me and says, you have Parkinson's. I said, about time somebody noticed. <laughs> I said, but okay, what was your clue? He said, I can tell by your facial expression, you don't have any. He said, your muscle tone is gone in your face. Really? But prior to that, about after I knew I had it, about six months down the road, after I knew I had it, I couldn't even put on my own socks and shoes. Every day my wife had to put them on for me. Okay. Until finally I was diagnosed, we went to see the neurologist, and uh, the lady that I saw at first didn't have much knowledge of Parkinson's, but at any rate, she uh, uh, prescribed a medication that is a patch that I still use, and uh, that made a tremendous difference for me. Good. It's called Nupro. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that because, you know, it, it's uh, the other part of the story. You are down here in the basement yeah. with a room that you've built for these fish tanks from scratch. Well, and it I didn't build it. I just. Uh, I'm well, sorry. You I, you designed I, it. You had somebody come in and do the work. Right. right. Okay. Got that. A handyman, actually. Ray, as you've seen in his videos, had basement tanks also. He had 22 tanks down in the basement. All right. All right. And so when he got sick with cancer and couldn't get down the steps anymore. Yeah. There was nobody to take care of his tanks. Oh. All right. And so when I went to visit him, I realized that his tanks hadn't been taken care of for quite some time. So the, the water was down. Uh, the fish, a lot of fish had died. Uh, his wife wasn't into it. I mean. Right. I understand. Well, my uh, wife isn't either, so I can understand that. My wife is into it, so if I don't do something, she does it. Okay. Well, that's great. And so that's very unique, oh, and what, I count that as a blessing. Is it, Jim? it is. 11.30. All right, let's get these uh, fish dripping. Okay. We do what we can, Jim, that's all. You got that right, Bruce. We do what we can. And with each passing year, it gets harder to do what we can. That's right. And so I'm down at the very end here. What do we got here? A bunch of quarries. Right. The catfish uh, those, tank? Those are two tanks I emptied out yesterday, so I'd have uh, a couple of empties to put new fish in today. Frank okay. found that I might be interested in. I see a lot of the uh, quarries over here. I love the yeah. catfish. Yeah. My frustration, oh, I, I meant to tell you, I, I screwed up. That attorney tank I told you about? Yeah. I bought five uh, really small, even compared to you, they were smaller baby catfish for that tank with the babies that I was trying to raise. Yeah. Well, for the first time ever, I added CO2, liquid CO2, to that five-gallon tank. Okay. And the next day, everybody was dead. Really? 
I assume that the CO2 just took the oxygen out of the water. I mean, they all, I, I rescued three fish, all the catfish were dead. What would you use, the API uh, yeah. booster? Yeah. How much of it did you use? I just uh, free-handed it by oh. a reasonable amount, and not much, I didn't think. So you don't read the instructions? Well, I used to do it by capful, and then I stopped doing it by capful, just got lazy. Oh. And that cost me everything in that tank. Oh yeah, I believe it. But anyway, and so the second tank here, what do we got going here besides some great looking plants? Love that, the that's red. just catfish in there too. Like I okay. said, I, I threw both. everything out of both of those tanks yesterday. Yep. I took all the plants out, stirred the gravel up, rearranged the plants, rebunched them and so forth that were necessary. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all it amounts to. Yep. But, I mean, while that looks nice and it's pretty pristine right now because it was just redone. Right. I mean, it takes about 45 minutes for each tank to get it in that kind of shape. Yeah. To get them looking that good. And you got one, two, three, four, five, six of these 10-gallon gallon tanks. Right. And then the two big tanks at the end. Right. Now, look at this school of cardinals. Oh, my God. Yeah. Discus Madness? Or did you order them online? Uh, no, no. I got them from a couple different places. Really? They look gorgeous. Some did come from Discus Madness. Mm -hmm. And you got a whole bunch of coolie loaches here. Well, not a bunch, oh, but sorry. there is four of them in there. I can see four right here, or three of them at least. And do you see any of the, yeah, the bumblebee. Bumblebee goby, Sam? Oh, the yeah. Guys. Yeah. Yeah. And they have a little sucker underneath their, uh, yeah. Behind their jaw. Right. They can you sit on. To, you're right. And the angels that I just transferred from another tank yesterday, for some reason there's something that they've found that is very interesting for them to feed on in there. And they really work on it, or they were last night when I first put them in there, that they had to really struggle to get it off the plants and feed on it. I don't know what it is they were feeding on, but they were really very interested in it. Huh. And those are just your standard gold and black, and they're from uh, Discus Madness. And they were the cheaper varieties. I mean, they had what they call Black Ghost or something. Uh -huh. um, angels that were supposedly more black than these are. But I didn't find them to be very much more black. So I got I stayed with just the standard ones. Same Sometimes it's gold. just what you call marketing, right? Yeah, that's right. But the cardinals look beautiful. I mean, they're iridescent yeah. with that black background you had on that's these right. tanks. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. That was your plan when you did the uh, background. You were, you were matching up to the gravel, weren't you? Well, actually, uh, for the cardinals, I thought the best thing for them would have been the one with the blue gravel. Uh huh. Because it would have highlighted that against the uh, blue background. But the blue background doesn't show up very well in that tank. So, but I think it's partly because there's so many plants in there. No, I'm looking but at they the, look good there too. Yeah, so. they sure do. Yeah. I'm looking at the Black Molly tank now. Right. And so tell us the story about your Black Mollies. You ordered them and you ended up with a bunch of males, as I recall. Yeah. The outfit I got them from, that was online also. That one I'd never buy from again. I don't remember the name offhand, but I've got it written down somewhere, so I don't order anything again from them. Yeah. But you got eight and... And one female and seven males. That's no fun. And some of the males were kind of deformed. One did die. Uh-huh. And, uh, I mean, it looks like they've kind of straightened out now, but they're still not as uh, robust looking as they should. Now, we've got the black mice I brought down in a drip bucket, so you're getting used to the water here. Yep. And then the same thing with the other guppies in the other tank. I didn't realize you had so many guppies. I really yeah. wouldn't even bother. What time is it now, Jim? It's 11.40. Okay, let's increase the drip on both of these, and then we'll, okay. we'll put them away. Hold on one second. I'm going to move down. Right. I'm looking at the uh, green barbs. Yeah, green tiger barbs. And you've got a nice school, about eight of them there. That's what there is, is eight. Yeah, they were from... Uh, I think this is Madness. Yeah. That's where most of my fish are from, really, I think. And we do really well there. They're, they're not cheap, but they got good product, right? Yeah, good quality. That's the major thing. Yeah. That's what I'm interested in more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Price is, uh, yeah, it's a consideration, but it's secondary to the quality of what you're going to get. Exactly. 
You don't mind paying the price no, if you get what you're looking for. Stuff. And the growth of the plants here, mostly cabamba. Well, what else you got going on here? Helferia, I think, is the name of the one that grows really tall. Okay. In the back there. And then in the back there's water wisteria. Mm hmm. And what's, um, what's this plant here? I think that's, uh, oh, that, I forget, that's, uh, I forget the name of that one. Okay. Because I see it floating here in this guppy tank. Yes. Also. It's kind of, it'll, it'll work very well free floating, or you can uh, plant it, but it oftentimes it won't stay planted. Mm-hmm. Your guppies are doing beautifully here. All of my female guppies have colored tails. I noticed yours don't. I I actually shop for the colored tails. Well, I'm, first of all, yeah. most places that are selling the guppies nowadays only sell males. Hmm. Yeah. I have to agree. You have to get them in a separate tank, and yeah. I make sure I pick out the ones with the most colorful tails. Yeah. And then uh, they don't even have uh, females by themselves in a separate tank. I think because the breeders don't want any uh, competition. Mm-hmm. That, that makes sense. You know, it's taking them time to develop a strain. Yeah. And they don't want to just offer that out there to the public that the public, or someone in the public, will start to compete with them. A lot of insights in the YouTube videos and some of these breeders and what they're doing. Very interesting. Is that uh, right? Yeah. Very interesting videos to watch. Some of them better than others, of course. Yeah. All right. So what are the... Okay, we're in Bruce's upper fish room, as you've seen before, and he'll be back up in just a minute. He's recovering uh, some Amazon sword plants. He's going to see if he can sell at the stores we're going to go visit this afternoon on our fishing trip. But I just wanted to give you an expanse of this room. So there's his other big tank. And then coming around, uh, you see the other two tanks. Uh, and he'll be up to explain what's going on in these tanks in just a minute. But meanwhile, I always appreciate the fact that this one has got a mirror over here. And so I get to appear in uh, the videos also, usually when we're talking with him. So let's see if we can capture that right. And uh, as you see, this, this would be corresponding to my living room tanks. But he's got a separate room up here which is dedicated to them. And just beautiful tanks. Uh, I'll give you a preview till he gets up here to get into the detail, but he is so good with his planting. Uh, he's he's a, an expert at this stuff. Uh, he trims these plants, he maintains them very well. I must admit I'm more of a let the forest grow type gardener. And uh, as a result, his tanks always, always look, his tanks always look fantastic as you've seen in these videos over time. Uh, it's really more of a garden effect which is what my wife would do with our tanks for example. And I am truly blessed with a wife who is involved in the hobby. And she has learned everything uh, she needs to know about these things and uh, we can go out fishing together and she knows what to look for and she'll make recommendations and I tend to always follow her recommendations. So anyway, we'll turn this off for now and uh, capture more when Bruce comes up. Okay. Well, we're up in Bruce's main fish room, as I call it, the one that uh, started everything. And uh, that's right. Let's. I, I did a, a cross view of all four just to get the lay of the land here. Okay. But uh, what is what have you been doing up here recently? Well, not too much. Everything's pretty much the way it's been. I did a few of the new plants to this tank up here. Oh, and one of the plants I got from this new place right. is uh, one of those uh, lilies, like you see over there on right. the left-hand side. Now, the it's, lilies, it's last time we saw them, they were, they were huge. Oh, yeah. And they die off every once in a no, while? No, I had to really weed them out this last Oh, really? Time. Oh, yeah. Because they were taking light away from everything else. <laughs> See, that, that's but Bruce. He can get rid of plants. I can't get rid of plants. <laughs> yeah. There's one in here for you from this other outfit that's in a pot. Okay. And I'll be sending that home with you. All right. I appreciate that's that. That's way over on the right-hand side. We'll get that out when we come back. All right. So tell me what you've been doing here. we got, as I count them, uh, five discus. That's right. And they are gorgeous. But I also noticed you've got quite a few loaches in here now. Yeah, those uh, yo-yo loaches, I've been very pleased with them. You see the way they'll dig in the gravel? Yeah. 
they kind of keep uh, the debris from building up in the, in the surface of the gravel. I'm, I'm very pleased with them, except occasionally it seems like they'll try to uh, feed on the mucus on the side of uh, the discus fish. I was just going to ask you about that because I have that but problem they, too. I don't have discus. But those loaches can really swim amazingly well. Oh, yeah. And they'll get up next to like the red tailed shark or the tricolored sharks. And it's almost like they're swimming exactly almost connected to them at their mouth. I know. And the shark is trying to get away from them. And eventually they do get away. I mean, they don't damage them. But I've always wondered what that's about. You think they're going for the mucus? Well, or what? I think so. You know, discus, particularly when, they're, when their babies are born. Right. They cling to the sides of the uh, the parents right. in order to feed off the mucus that they have. Now, I don't know if they're feeding on that or if there's something else that they're uh, actually just maybe even helping the fish out with removing some uh, parasitic growth on them. I don't, I'm just not sure. They don't seem to disturb anything in that they stay with them for an extended period of time and bother the fish. So uh, I'm not too concerned about it. But it when I first saw it happening, I thought, oh man, I'm going to have to get them out of there eventually. I don't know how long I'm going to catch them. They get pretty big. Mine are big, and they're, you're yeah. right, they really do dig in the gravel. Yeah. I mean, they get down there. Yeah. I'm looking at your Tetra school over here in the corner. Very nice. What, about, about eight or ten of them at least? The, uh, yeah, that's the what they call Copeland Tetras. Okay. Or also, I think another name for them is uh, Circus Tetras. Huh. Okay. Or clown tetras, I'm not sure, but uh, I think they're they're quite colorful. I had only seen them at the one place, one of the new places we'll go to today, and I had asked him about them, and he said, well, they're peaceful. He mm -hmm. said they don't go real large. Apparently, the males have that little bit a white tip on a dorsal fin. Yep. And also on one of the anal fins as well. No, I'm not. So you got another school where they lemon tetras up there, no, or head tail uh, lights? Head lights, yeah. Head they really do school nicely, though. They do, yeah. But they get along well with the big discus, don't they? Discus yeah, are they're very mild-mannered fish. They are pretty mild, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, discus don't seem to bother anything. You'll see there's one really large cardinal tetra still left in this tank. Oh, yeah. I see them right above the Amazon sword yeah. plant there. All right, let's come over to the tank to your right. The 38 gallon? Okay. That has some discus fish in it also, a different strain, but they're all the same. They're, they were called super green uh, discus. You got a large and school and of... Uh, I wanted them to show me some adults, because sometimes the adults don't show near the color the juveniles do. Uh -huh. But they didn't have any adults at the time, so I just took my chances on them, and I just got four about the same size. Nice school of neon tetras over in the corner there? Uh, it's a mix of neons and cardinals. And, cardinals, yeah. and, I and see there's that a school of uh, harlequin rasbora. And a beautiful red bed up towards the top there that's yeah. coming around towards the yeah, front. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah. Sort of black in the darkness. I did have some blue-eyed killifish. Uh, uh, but unfortunately they all died off. Huh. And, uh, I don't know, maybe it was one of the, it might be an annual, but maybe their annual was pretty much up when I got them. I got okay. them this was madness, and they didn't have any idea of whether they were annuals or not. You know, every time we talk about discus madness, I have to add my apologies because that time we were up there and that, that had that huge like wiggy type plant in the center yeah. that I almost I was willing to buy for a hundred dollars almost. Yeah, and not that, that I would. Yeah. It was just huge. And yeah. that they would sell some of that plant. I said, Okay, I'll take a bunch. Well, they just went into that tank and I took seven stems off cuttings. And I thought, huh. And that cost me like ten bucks. And I thought that's I was not happy. Well, that plant has continued to grow and overcome every tank I put it in. And so I always have to say, I learned, okay? That cutting they had was more than enough. Oh yeah, absolutely, I agree. <laughs> I've got a plant now that would match their $100 plant. Yeah. yeah. And so anything else special over here that we need to uh, make note of? No, nothing else really special. Now the one thing that I have found over time is the neurite snails. Ah, okay. But they really keep the algae under control. 
Except you can't use net right snails when you have uh, like clown loaches. Clown or loaches like snails, don't really they? I love snails. All right, well, I'm coming so, over there in a minute, but for right now, you got a tank in the middle here. Are those babies or are those just really tiny adult fish? Which ones? You in the about? tank oh, here. Oh, that's a that's a shrimp tank. Okay, but I'm seeing and small also, fish in there too. Yeah, the small fish are the smallest size danios that there are. And they're called celestial. Okay. Danios. Celestial. Celestial. Yeah, yeah but they, they just never showed the color that I thought that they might. Were they full size in there? I'm, That's I'm, as big as they get. Wow. Yeah, they're only they're only about uh, half to three quarters of an inch long. Very very small. I don't know yeah. if we can capture them. Yeah. In the video here or not, I'm going to go in and, and I will say that was one fish that I got that I had good success with with that outfit that I told you I wasn't going to buy anything else from. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten 30 of those. And they go good with the uh, shrimp you have oh, in yeah, there. Yeah, they don't bother the shrimp at all. Well, they're very small, yeah. so their mouth is tiny too. I'm surprised the shrimp don't go after the fish. Well, actually, that's the tank. That, I mean, the plants grow so fast in that tank, it's just unreal. Really? And I don't know what it is about that tank, but uh, the plants just overwhelm it very quickly. Huh. Just something about certain tanks just develop a certain personality. <laughs> that, uh, One way to put it. Hard to explain. Yeah. All right, I'm moving over to the final tank over here. And this is a... Yeah, that's a semi-aggressive tank. And uh, it's got a mix of... Uh, some fish that are peaceful but grow large enough that the other fish won't bother them. I know you there's had some rosy barbs in there. You got two clown loaches. Yeah, there's two clown loaches in there. So and you know. There's uh, Congo tetras. There's about ten Congo tetras. Two are very large. They were ones that were holdovers. The others were ones that I had transferred from one of the tanks downstairs. And there's a. Uh, about five giant Daniels in there also, but they're still young, so they haven't grown too big yet. Mm -hmm. But it's a very active tank. I mean, when you feed those, it's like feeding a bunch of piranhas. They just go nuts <laughs> when you feed them. And I see they that plant... water outside the tank and everything when they start feeding. That narrow leaf plant on the right is just overgrowing that corner. Yeah. And what, what plant is that? Do you remember? Again, I, I, I can't remember, remember it, myself. I remember no. the name okay, of them, no. it's doing it's very like, well, obviously. It's like when I was first got in business, I decided well, the only way to identify some of the fish is to use a scientific name. So people would ask me the name of, for example, the Oscar, and I'd say, well, it's an Astronautus ocellatus. And they'd say, what? <laughs> what is that in English? <laughs> you know. So I just gave up on it, and I just stuck with uh, just the common names. How many years were you in business again, Bruce? Well, five years was my first business, and that wasn't very successful. That was out in Gateway? Uh, that was in Gateway, yeah. Right. And that was because of uh, the way it was handled. I mean, my, my father did that to me, not for me. Um, you were, you were he, still in high school. Yeah. He had asked me, he, well, he even told me, I mean, I was taking the college prep course in school. But I really didn't care too much about schooling at the time. I didn't see any practical value to a lot of things we were learning. So anyway, when he told me that he was going to send me to college, I said, a waste of my time and your money. So about a month later, he says to me, how would you like to open your own business? Sure, Dad. Yeah. You know, just offhandedly. Right. Never discussed it, never did anything. He took out a five-year year lease and put me in charge of the place. And that, that fish I mean, store I was, was very resentful, so I didn't I didn't work at it very hard. And that fish store was out in the outskirts of Metuchen. It wasn't right. really it, it wasn't on Main Street. Right. And so, so that, we used to come out on our bikes to visit it. Yeah, but that was a detriment also. But uh, your heart wasn't in that one. Not at all. Not until the last maybe two years when I finally began to think about it more. See even after I had been in the business for like six months, I got a call from one of the uh, high school counselors that there was a job opening at one of the banks in town. They thought I'd make a perfect fit for a teller. And I was, I, would, I was offered more money than I was making at the, my own business. I'm sure. Matter of fact, I made more money with the paper out than I did with the <laughs> business. So uh, I, I just had to tell him, you know, I'm obligated for five years with what my father did. 
So I can't do it. I just turned it down off hand, out of hand, without even thinking about it. And that's when I started to learn you've got to think before you make a decision. And I use that with my grandchildren and my own children throughout my years. I said, there's a five letter word I always want to use, it's told what to my employees too. Think before you do something. How often do, uh, does somebody do something and they'll, they'll tell you when it doesn't work out, I didn't think such and such would happen. <laughs> I, I did. said, repeat those three word first <laughs> words to me. I didn't think. I didn't think, yeah. <laughs> I said, and now next time, next time you do something, Use just a one five letter word before you do it, and that's think. Well, now I'm curious. In five years, you were really getting into it toward the end, yeah, but then you it. moved into the heart of Metuchen, which well, is a high rent district. Yeah, I was going to join the Marine Corps, though. Oh, okay. That's what I was going to do. But the last six months I was in business, there was a guy coming in that we hit it off pretty well. He was working at Westinghouse and wanted to get out. He was 14 years older than me. His name was uh, Roy Gibbs. I remember and, uh, Roy well. He, he said, well, I think we could make a success out of it if we went to a better location. How if we went to Main Street? And I thought about it and thought about it and I thought, well, you know, I'm not really ready to give up on this yet. I don't know if I'm ready for the Marine Corps either. <laughs> so uh, that's what we did. That's and we, and did that become we just we success? just pulled, pulled our finances, which were minimal. Yeah, and uh, we opened on a shoestring, you might say. Yeah, and um, was that an instant success once you got into town? No, it was no. not. But see, he had been in the military, right? And uh, he was a real worker. I'll tell you that. Matter of fact, we would be there sometimes after work on a say a Saturday night. We were closed on Sundays. At any rate, we would clean the floor like you would do a GI cleaning in the Army. Because I did wind up in the Army. Well, i got to tell you, I can I recall the shop well. Ray and I often spent time there with you. You could eat off our floors after we were ready it to open It never had Monday. the smell of a pet shop. Yeah. So I didn't know why, but that makes sense. Yeah. Well, he was a stickler for making things clean. I Good. think it was all his experience in the Army, which I know he became a, a sergeant while he was there still. I think he was only a buck sergeant, but that's okay. you know. Uh, and I wound up in the National Guard because we were getting ready to open. At the time, they were increasing the draft because of some more nonsense going on in Germany with uh, Russia. Okay. So he said, you know, we're opening a new business. I can't afford to have you away for two years when we're opening a new business because he was going to stay at Westinghouse until we got established, you know, okay. and, and just come in after work and, yeah. and on weekends and so forth. And I said, yeah, well, okay, it makes sense. We hired a, a college guy for those six months active duty that I was in the uh, Army the first six months. and. Uh, Turns out his first name was Bruce also. <laughs> At any rate, I finished my basic training, and after eight weeks I came back to the shop, and I thought to myself, God, this business looks really small from what I remember. And I was really considering at that time making the Army a career. Okay. And uh, I wouldn't have gotten overwhelmed with Roy, I'm sure, but, <laughs> you know, I decided to get to it anyway. Again, I put that five-letter word into... Think. operation and decided, well, I was going to give it a shot. Now, how long did it take before you'd say it was successful? I'd say within about three or four years. No, oh, that's not yeah. bad. Yeah, we turned it around pretty quick. Yeah. And, um, and you didn't take over a pet shop. You, you no, took over a shop and made it a pet shop. Right, exactly. Right, okay. As a matter of fact, there was a building they were renovating downtown. We took, you know, the, the, the storefront that they had available, we took one third of the storefront. And within five years, we were ready to enlarge. Well, it turns out the place next to us, which had also rendered a third, was a, uh, a rug shop. A rug shop? Yeah. And they were going out of business, so we, uh, we made the offer to the uh, landlord at that yeah. time and said, you know, we'd be interested in expanding into that. And they were willing to take us on because we were, you know, we were paying our rent regularly and everything. 
So uh, and we expanded and doubled our size. I remember your window. It was always a. Oh, I mean, yeah. down, downtown Metuchen. Now, Metuchen, for those who are watching our video, don't know. It's a mile square in the heart of a township called Edison. Yeah. It had the train station that people would go into New York. So it's called the Brainy Borough because yeah. the brains in New York lived in Metuchen. No. 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 No, it's called the Brainy Borough, which most people don't realize because a lot of the professors that, went, that taught at Rutgers had established themselves okay. in town, and that's why it was called the Rainy Borough. Okay. A lot of people did take offense to that. Oh, you think you people think you're smarter than everybody else, don't you? <laughs> so don't no, we don't? But it was hard to convince people of that. But anyway, it, it's a mile square town, but it has a very vibrant downtown. Yes, I mean, it does. In, in today's day and age of shopping centers and so forth, Metuchen is still a vibrant downtown with a lot of fancy eateries and growing up a, apartment or condominium or whatever is going on down there. I mean, it's, it's growing like crazy. Yeah, downtown. that's the problem. Yeah. It's growing too fast, too quick, and uh, it's changing the character of the town a lot. I'm sure. But anyway, it, it was a great town to grow up in as kids, yeah. and your shop was a great shop that we would come into. I can remember well, Ray and I... had a lot more diversity of shops at that time. Yes. But yeah. with the uh, internet available and everything, that has uh, limited the number of retail shops that are available right. other than uh, restaurants. It was a family town. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a great town to grow up in. Yeah, I one grew time up in. we had three uh, pharmacies on Main Street. Boyd's? Who were the other two? Wernick. Wernick, right. And there was one other one, too. Huh. I, forget, I forget what the other one was. It, it, it was it's and at still one time we had... Uh, uh, three hardware stores also. There was Burrow Hardware, right. there was Touching Hardware, and Drake's Hardware. Yeah, that, that's, it was quite a town and it was a lot of fun. I can remember, and I'll close out with this one final story. Ray and I caught some black-nosed daces out in the streams, out in the woods, which we lived in all summer long. Right. And we sold you a large school of black-nosed daces. They're a pretty fish. They're black and gray fish. They look great with a black stripe. And you said, okay, I'll take them in. And you had a tank full of these beautiful fish. I don't know if you ever sold a single one. I don't remember. <laughs> but, but we were very pleased that we actually sold some fish. Yeah. I'm sure we paid you the, the money back or it was just a credit or something because yeah, we buy fish. Yeah. But those days, you could, uh, you could buy a lot of fish for a buck. Well, that's true. And we, we always, Ray and I always talked about the days when, you know, we'd save up our money to buy two fish. Yeah. And it had to be male and, and female and guppy, for example. The one thing I was disappointed in was when I was, you know, had my going out of business sale, Ray came in to see me the one time and he said, how are we going to connect and stay together? And I thought, well, we'll work something out. But I, I didn't make much effort and I guess he lost track of where I was. And so we never got together. And I, we missed all those years together. Yeah. It's funny because I knew you lived down on Woodbridge Avenue. Right. And that's all I knew. And I've been out of touch with you since I moved out of town. I've moved all over the place. He moved out to East Brunswick. Do you even know my last name? Uh, yes. I knew it was Jensen. Okay. And uh, I knew your wife's name was Lee. Um, but when Ray passed away, I was driving down there and I thought, you know, I ought to look, look you up. And I had no idea where on Woodbridge Avenue you lived. Yeah. But I called uh, Ray's sister. Okay. It was lived in a touch, and I said, you know, is there a town directory or something? Yeah. I didn't know if you were still alive. I had no idea. Yeah, right? no, I understand. And she's, and I told her who I was looking for. He said, oh, his wife and I do at water aerobics. Oh, well, tell him I need to talk to him. And that's how we reconnected after all yeah, those well, years. It's pretty amazing how that all worked out. Yeah, it's a small world. It's funny because I still remember Ray saying, you know, how are we going to stay connected? And I thought, well, we'll find a way, Ray. But we, <laughs> you know, I didn't make much effort, and I guess. He didn't either afterwards. And, he and, moved out and, to East Brunswick and yeah, Old Bridge. I know, I know. Far That's enough a away. Shame. We missed that time together. Yep. Well. We could have been the three troubadours. <laughs> well, as we close down, we're going to do a fishing trip, and that includes lunch. That's the tradition. And so Bruce was just asking me what kind of uh, food we wanted to have. So what did we decide, Bruce? The Italian. Is that going to be close to where these fish stores are yeah, that we're going? Yeah, we'll be far. 
All right. Well, it'll be close to the one. The other one will be okay. maybe 45 minutes from there. It's your choice. And so with that, we're going to sign off here. Okay. And uh, go have a fishing trip. Yeah. Take care.